Welcome everyone. I'm being dazzled this morning. Angeline's got a very bright light on the camera. So if I blink at you, it's, that's the reason. Our theme for today is You Are Special. It's based on the Bible reading from Genesis 1, 24 to 31. 30, 24 to 31. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, bless all of us as we listen to this message from you and as you remind us that each of us is special to you and that everyone around us is special to you. Bless us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, what is a human life worth? Um, if you look at the chemicals in a body, well, you'd say not much. Uh, but intuitively we know that every human life is precious. If someone's in trouble, they're drowning or they're lost uh, in bushwalking or whatever, people galore give of their time and the effort and it doesn't matter how much it costs to rescue someone because intuitively we know that uh, human life is priceless. It may not be logical or economical, but most of us know intuitively that every life is priceless, that every person is special. But you know, human beings haven't always felt this way. A while ago, some of us watched the DVD uh, for the love of God. It's a great DVD. I think you can get it online as well. It's from uh, the Centre for Public Christianity from John Dixon and Friends. And it's a great DVD to watch. The writers of this DVD point out that in the world of the Greeks and the Romans around the time when Jesus was born, it was not uncommon to find babies discarded like rubbish on the dumps outside town. Uh, babies were exposed and left to die uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, because the child was deformed or had a serious illness, or because the parents wanted a boy rather than a girl, or because the child was the product of adultery or incest or rape. Um, we have a letter written by a Roman soldier based in Alexandria in Egypt uh, to his pregnant wife back home. And this letter is dated about 1 BC. And he says to his wife, to his pregnant wife, I ask you to take good care of our baby son. And as soon as I receive payment, I will send it to you. If you are delivered of your child uh, before I come home, if it's a boy, keep it. If it's a girl, discard it. It shows how unshocking it was to how normal it was in that culture to uh, expose unwanted children. Um, Plato, the great Greek philosopher, says this, we must get rid of surplus children and only the best per people should be born and others should be got rid of. John Dixon on this DVD says, it comes down to how we measure an individual's worth. If a person's worth depends on what they add to society, then discarding the useless makes some sense. But if our worth depends on something higher, something absolute, it's a different story. And arguably the most absolute claim about human value is that every man, woman or child is created in the image of God. And that's the answer that the writers of the creation accounts give at the start of the Bible in Genesis 1 and 2. Uh, there are two separate creation counts there, one largely in chapter 1 and one largely in chapter 2. The first account is built around seven days, and you might remember God created different things, the writer says, on different days. And as a climax of creation, God created us human beings. Uh, listen to what the writer says. 
Then God said, let us make human beings in our image, in our likeness, and let, let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over all animals, domestic and wild, large and small. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. What does it mean that we're created in the image of God? Well, it means we're created, we alone are created to have a relationship with God. In a commentary on Genesis that I have by my Old, Old Testament lecturer at uh, Luther Seminary or at a Australian Lutheran College, uh, he's an old man now, uh, but uh, still a, quite a astute man or has been. And he says, all this leads to the conclusion that there's no other creature made by God which has such affinity with God and stands in such a close and intimate relationship with the Creator. Uh, in other words, he's saying that, uh, expressing the fact that we are only, out of all of God's creation, are created to live our life in a relationship with God. In short, we're special. God's created us special and we are special to God. And by the way, that same point comes for, through in the second creation account uh, where the writer says God creates human being, a human being, and then he puts the animals around him in the garden. Admittedly, the woman is a little bit of an afterthought in this creation account, but uh, the point is that uh, everything's built around us human beings and we are uh, special and precious to God. This is true as you look right through the Old Testament and there are many creation accounts where uh, the writers say that God created us human beings. I love the one in uh, Psalm 139. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And it goes on, this is a good news translation, I know it with all my heart when my bones were being formed, carefully put together in my mother's womb. When I was growing there in secret, you, you knew that I was there. You saw me before I was born. We have a wonderful God who has made us to live in a relationship with him. You know, the writers of the creation accounts and this psalm can say what they say because They've experienced God. Uh, they've experienced God rescuing them from Egypt, looking after them in the wilderness, bringing them to the rich and fertile land of, Egypt, of Israel, caring for them. So they can say, there is a God, yeah, and he's good. And when he made us, everything he made was good. And he made us to live in a special relationship with him. When you get to the New Testament and you listen to Jesus, the Son of God, Jesus says the same about you and me before God. Listen to what Jesus says. He says, don't be afraid of people. For only a few cents you can buy two sparrows, yet not one sparrow falls to the ground without your father's consent. As for you, even the hairs of your head have been counted. So don't be afraid. You are worth much more than many tiny sparrows. And remember when uh, a teacher of the law asked Jesus, what's the most important commandment of all? Jesus said, hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God is only one Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second most important commandment is like it. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. Um, the most important thing Jesus says, affirming the Old Testament, is for us to love God, whom God has made us uh, to live in a relationship with, and to love uh, the people that God has placed around us, who are also made in the image of God and who are precious and special to God. 
Remember too, Jesus in his parables emphasising uh, the way God is willing to search out for us so that we might come to live in a relationship with him. I love the parable of the, uh, good, uh, the sheep that was lost in Luke chapter 15. I've mentioned this recently. Um, you know, Jesus said, suppose a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one gets lost. What does he do? Well, he leaves the other 99 and goes looking for the lost sheep. And when he finds it, he puts it on his shoulders and carries it back home. And he says to everyone, let's rejoice for the lost has been found. Let's celebrate. That's how it is with God and us. God values you and me so much he would go to any lengths to bring us back to a relationship with him. Each person is special and precious to God. God loves us and he wants us to love and care for one another. Every human being is precious to God. Babies in the womb and in their mother's arms, infants, people with special needs, the aged, the dying, whoever. Well, what's God saying to us this morning through all this? I think three things. Firstly, that you and I are special to God. I guess it's the obvious point to take out of all that, all that I've said uh, based on uh, the creation accounts, the Old Testament, on what Jesus, God's Son, has said, that we're all special and priceless to God. Uh, there's there are times when we think we're worthless, a bit like Punchinello in that story that Max Licardo tells about the wooden puppets, which we're going to use in children's message uh, for this Sunday. Uh, Punchinello didn't, had all sorts of grey dots on him, given to him by people who thought he was worthless. And then he met with his maker, Eli, and Eli said to him, I love you, you're precious to me. And the dots started dropping off. And it's the same with us when we come to God and we hear afresh that he loves us and that we're special and precious to him and that he sent his son to suffer and die for us. Uh, then the dots drop off us, the gray dots, and we know that we are loved and valued. Uh, we are loved and valued because God made us and he redeemed us, he rescued us. There's actually a cute little story about that. You might know it. It's called uh, You Are Twice Mine. It's about um, uh, a little boy who builds a boat. Uh, you know, it has a little sail on it, uh, takes it down to the sea to sail it and everything's going fine until a big gust of wind comes up and the boat's, this toy boat's blown out to sea and it's lost. Um, well, he's in despair and um, he has to live without his boat. And then one day he walks past a, a second-hand store and sees this boat in the window. And he goes to the lady and he says, look, uh, that's my boat, I made it. And the lady says, well, sorry, uh, I bought it off someone who found it on the seashore. If you want it back, you'll have to buy it. And the boy goes home and gets all his coins together and comes back and he buys that boat back. And then he says to the boat, you are twice mine. I made you and I redeemed you. I bought you back. Well, that's what God says to us as we feel worthless. You are mine. You are special to me. I made you and I don't make junk. And I so love you that I sent my son uh, to rescue you so that you might be brought back um, into my family. Secondly, um, God's saying to us this morning, I think, I believe, no, I'm sure, he's saying each person is special. Um, you know, uh, we tend to, in our society to think that only those who contribute to our society um, or aren't a drain on our resources or are young and fit are worthwhile. Um, 
But God wants to lo- us to love people regardless of their age or their abilities or their intelligence or their usefulness. Uh, I think that's a pretty good slide, you know, uh, hands of different colours. Um, we're uh, called to love one another regardless of race, regardless of age, regardless of wellness, whatever. Finally, the third thing I think that God wants us to do is to struggle for the rights and the needs of every person. Um, Every person has a God-given right to life. In our current situation, in our society, I believe it means that we struggle against abortion, that we struggle against infanticide, Uh, That doesn't happen in our society yet, but the most prominent Australian ethicist, Peter Singer, is in America, and he's avowing that, that if we kill babies in the womb because of circumstances, why not kill them when they're newborn? If they're defective or deformed or... uh, And I believe it means fighting against euthanasia. Um, and to fight for the rights of unborn babies and uh, those who have special needs and the unemployed and the homeless and the mentally ill and the sick and the dying. What do you think? Who's God calling you to uh, care for and to struggle for the rights of that person or those people? Yeah, I put that slide up too to remind us that God wants us to care for everyone, including the aged and the dying. He doesn't want us to uh, inject them. I I really feel strongly about the fact that uh, this euthanasia law means that we basically have crossed the Rubicon uh, into no no state goes back from this, and we're sanctioning uh, state well state sanctioned murder, basically killing, and in other societies um, where this has happened, there has been a slippery slope and uh, to the killing of of uh, the um, those who are feeling uh, depressed those who are dementia, uh, those... Anyway, the, what's God calling you to fight against, to struggle against? Thank God that we live under the cross of Jesus with God's ongoing forgiveness and may God's Spirit in us lead and guide us as we struggle to care for all those around us, including uh, the aged and the dying. And the peace which God gives and which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.